and we'll keep doing this over and over again. We Meanwhile, just I'm being assaulted missed by TSA a Clinton the cackle. You guys, we just missed the first Clinton cackle. Uh oh. I don't know what uh -oh. you're doing. Joe's on standby with the yeah. Clinton cackle. Got the cackle. Here's instant replay. <laughs> okay, there we got it. <laughs> it's the. Well, she's, she's playing the oh, card. Cackle and the, it's like a cackle followed then by awkward silence. Here's the other ploy that they always use. Uh, my opponent endorsed me in 2008. That's what she's saying now about uh, yeah. Governor O'Malley. How many of these guys have gotten endorsed or taken payments from Trump, I wonder? Yeah. 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 She was also endorsed by Goldman Sachs, <laughs> and like Monsanto, and a bunch of other major corporations that are now. You know, diplomacy is not about getting to the perfect solution. It's about how you balance the risk. Thank you. And I think we have an opportunity here and I know that inside the administration, this is being hotly debated uh, to get that leverage to try to get the and Russians to you. have to deal with everybody in the region and to begin to move toward a political <laughs> diplomatic solution thank you, in Syria. Thank, thank you. Senator, Senator Webb, Zip it. Look, I, I agree with Donald Trump <laughs> on the, the one thing when he said, look, if ISIS is this big threat, if Russia wants to come in there and bomb the hell out of them, let them do it. Right. Yeah. Why do we have to keep yeah. spending our resources, keep wasting our money, putting our our soldiers, our airmen at risk mm -hmm. to go do something like this. If he wants to go in there, by all means, take the reins, bomb the hell out of them. And then they're dropping them ammunition and other groups who Russia is now trying to bomb. So they're giving them weapons, effectively well, starting accidentally, a pro though, proxy war with Russia. And in Syria, allowed uh, terrorist movements to move in there. And the third was the recent uh, deal allowing Iran to move forward and eventually acquire a nuclear weapon, which sent... So he's talking about what, in his view, is uh, behind uh, Syria. I disagree that it's blowback. I think it was by design. Wesley Clark told us it was by design. We have seen the United States cementing the Arab Spring as well as overthrowing Libya and doing everything else in their power, including staging false flag gas, sarin gas attacks. Where we need to be, in terms of our national strategy, a focus the greatest strategic threat that we have right now is resolving our relationship with China. And we need to do this because of their aggression in the region. We need to do it because of Senator, the way they treat their own people. And I would say this, I've been waiting for 10 minutes. I will say this. <laughs> they will not let them go. Just go. You've let a lot of people go over their time. I would say this. You agree to these Just go. The unelected authoritarian government of China, you do not own the South China Sea. You do not have the right to conduct cyber warfare against tens of millions of American we citizens. We own the South China And in a web administration, <laughs> we will do something about that. <laughs> Senator Sanders, I want you to be able to respond. Oh, Our uh, flags are made in China. Uh, I'd like you to be able to, to respond. Uh, that's true. Well, All our think, stuff's uh, made uh, there. The they don't own the South China uh, Sea. We uh, own the South China Sea. Regret. Darn, got it. Uh, what are you doing? There's a lot of resources <laughs> there. Oh, man, I tell you, this country's in a lot when of trouble. When he gets into that... He doesn't seem to be the type of guy to regret a lot. <laughs> well, I think he is already regretting what he did in Crimea and what he is doing in the Ukraine. I think he is really regretting the decline of his economy. Oh, and I think river. what he is trying to do now is save some face. But I think when Russians get killed in Syria <laughs> and when he gets bogged down... I think the Russian people are going to give him the <laughs> message that maybe they should come home. Maybe they should start working with the United States to rectify the situation there. Se Secretary Clinton. Yeah, they think they can do another Trump Afghanistan Trump to the Russians, uh, you know, because that's where we created Al Qaeda. We created the Mujahideen to get them bogged down in a Vietnam struggle. They have imported, and we've had uh, the leaders of ISIS, Al Nusra, and everything talk about how they brought in. Chechen jihadis that had been used by the U.S. to do surrogate attacks into uh, into Russia. They said, "Hey, there was nothing going on," so they moved us into uh, Syria. You know, new war, new action, and and that's what Putin understands. He understands these same Islamic terrorists that the U.S. has been using against them in Afghanistan, using against them coming in from Chechnya. They've now moved into Syria. This is a chance to uh, get rid of them. He understands what's going on. An and David, the Iraqi government just gave Putin the okay to come in and help them fight Al-Qaeda and Iraq. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? They yep. don't trust the Americans to do that because they know the Americans are arming and creating ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all these different uh, jihadi groups. But she dealt with Gaddafi. Yeah, she dealt with him, yeah. yeah. She, she created a hornet's nest there in Libya. We came, Didn't that place we used saw. to be like really beautiful and now it looks like uh, kind of the surface of the moon? Right. Yeah.
Uh, it's a breeding a ground for terrorism. The thank you, thank you, Hillary and right. Obama. And Great that job. That was one of her accomplishments. Yes. Oh, she's. To explain <laughs> where we were then, and to point out that she says she has very I think President Obama about what happened made in the right decision <laughs> at the time. Yeah. And it's the kind of Libyan intuition people feeling. had a free election, <laughs> the first time since 1951. And you know what? They voted for moderates. They voted with the hope of democracy. Because of the Arab Spring, because of a lot of other things, there was turmoil yeah, to be Arab followed. Spring. But unless you believe the United States should not send diplomats to any place that is dangerous, which I do not, then when we send them forth, there is always the potential for danger and risk. Governor Mellon? Can I uh, Anderson, I think we are learning. Especially and when I told I'm them that as I called in the airstrikes. Oh, yeah, wait, exactly. I didn't call in airstrikes. <laughs> yeah. That we need to do a much better job as a nation of having human intelligence on the ground so that we know who the emerging next generation leaders are that are coming up to replace a dictator. So when when is somebody going to come out and say we don't need to have an American empire? That every empire has destroyed its own country. That's what our founders said. We don't need to have intelligence on the ground to know who the up and coming leaders are. We need to butt out of this. We need to mind our own business. We need to come home. Fix our economy, man our own borders, and uh, this this is absolute insanity. We hear this from the Democrats as well as the Republicans. Nothing is going to change, no matter who gets elected in this. Occurring in the way that we intervened in Libya, we had no treaties at risk. We had no Americans at risk. There was no threat of attack or imminent attack. There is plenty of time for a president to come to the Congress and request authority to He's use right military this. force in that situation. I called for it on the Senate floor again and again. I called on it for it in Senate hearings. It is not a wise thing to do, and if people think it's a wise the thing Constitution? to do, try to get to the Tripoli airport today. You can't I don't say that word. Mm -hmm. Secretary Oh, yeah, they're going to talk about Constitution. Yeah, You're a Marine. yeah what he's saying is we should have had a discussion, we should have had a debate on whether or not to go to war. That's, that's what the Constitution says. During the right. Vietnam yeah. War, the man standing next to you, Senator Sanders, applied for status as a conscientious objector. Given right. his history, can he serve as a credible commander-in-chief? Now, everybody makes their decisions, particularly when the time there is conscription. And as long as they go through the legal process that our country requires, I, I respect that. And it would be for the voters to decide you know, whether Senator Sanders or anyone else should be president. I will say this, coming from the position that I've come from, what I've come from, from a military family, with my brother a Marine, my son was a Marine in Iraq, I served as a Marine, spending five years in the Pentagon, I am very comfortable that I am the most qualified person standing up here today, today to be your commander in chief. Senator Sanders, tell an American Kip, soldier. What have you got going on, right on uh, Twitter? In Afghanistan. Well, I got Steve here with uh, at even Grunt Seven, who points out that one of the Democratic candidates says that they're dropping the authoritarian bomb, which I find funny. You know, we had the one Democratic candidate call China authoritarian mm -hmm. when this all of these people like they're bragging about how they're going to trample the Second Amendment rights and how they're going to expand the size and scope of the government. So yeah, I find it very ironic that we're hearing Democrats using the word authoritarianism against China. But yeah, he said I'm, that we're going to tell that authoritarian regime the South China Sea doesn't belong to you, China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> we're going to fight, fight over it. That's amazing. <laughs> like Jim, who fought in that war, involved in that war. That was my view then. I am not a pacifist, Anderson. I supported the war in Afghanistan. Uh, I supported President Clinton's effort to deal with ethnic cleansing in Kosovo. He just I doesn't support, support the wars that he has Syria, to go fight. He yeah, doesn't to do. support fighting yes, himself. I happen yeah. to believe from the bottom of my heart that war should be the last resort that thank we have you. got to exercise our diplomacy. But yes, I am prepared Senator, to take this country into and war if, if that I, is very, very quickly, 30 thank seconds thank for each of you. That's why we have to go after countries that didn't even attack us. National security threats to the United <laughs> States. Well, I want to go down the line. Okay, I just have to answer one thing that Senator Webb said about uh, the Iran deal, because I'm a strong proponent of what of President Obama, and he said that because of the Iran deal, that enabled Russia to come in. No, that's not true, Senator Webb. I respect your foreign policy. Uh, chops, but uh, uh, Russia is aligned with Iran and with, the, with uh, Assad and the Alawite Shias in Syria. So that, that the Iran deal did not allow okay, Russia Senator, to Okay, Senator, I've got to give you 30 seconds to respond. I, I believe that the signal 
that we sent to the region when the Iran nuclear deal, deal was, was concluded was that we are accepting Iran's greater position in this very important balance of power among our greatest ally, Israel, and the Sunnis represented by the Saudi uh, regime and Iran. It, it, it was a position of weakness, and I think it encouraged the acts Did that we Did he say the Sunnis the represented by Saudi? 30 seconds for each of you. Governor Chafee, what is the greatest no. national security threat to the United Saudi States? Saudi Arabia is Wahhabi. It's certainly right. the chaos in the Middle East. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Okay. <laughs> it all started with the Iraq invasion. Governor Sunni Malik, is, is Iraq, as she is Iran, and Saudi Russia. Arabia is Wahhabi, right? Right. Of Makes cascading threats even worse. I don't Secretary know. Clinton, the greatest <laughs> national security threat. <laughs> what do I know? It has to be continually uh, threat from the. Oh, well, it doesn't matter, right? Weapons, they all look the same. Material that can fall into the wrong hands. <laughs> I know the terrorists are constantly seeking it, and that's why we have to stay vigilant, but also united uh, around the world to prevent that. Senator Sanders, greatest national security The scientific security. community is telling us if we do not address the global crisis of climate change, Transform our energy system away from oh, there we go. There we go. Sustainable energy, the greatest national security threat to the U.S. And our yeah. children yeah. may well not be habitable. That's, That's the greatest security threat. It is the greatest security threat. The, the climate change lie is the greatest security threat. The greatest day to day threat is cyber warfare against this country. Our greatest military operational threat is resolving these situations in the Middle East. All right, we're going to take a short break. Do these candidates... Sounds like he would yeah, be let's, supporting... Let's talk about uh, the missing the nukes. How come we have missing nukes here and nobody seems to care or bat an eye about it? It just seems to be covered up <laughs> well, by they're the press. Waiting, we're the only ones that covered it. They're waiting on the right. drug cartels to get the tunnels built so they can bring ISIS in <laughs> to take them, and then we blame them on something else. Yeah. Mm. But that wall is going to stop Those things didn't come from the Savannah River site. <laughs> yeah, isn't it interesting, though, uh, apart from, you know, uh, the, the back and forth blaming, you made the wrong decision at this point in time, that point in time. Isn't it, isn't it interesting how much, how, how similar the Democrats are to the Republicans in all these foreign policy issues? You know, we just need to be stronger than the other guys. We need to kick butt everywhere. And, you know, we didn't win in that one little war over there. Not... To ever say that, you know, we, we really shouldn't have gone there, except for what they're talking about with Iraq. They say, well, Iraq is a mistake. Right. You had a little bit of that discussion going back and forth in the Republican uh, uh, debates. But, but for the most part, they all accept the idea that we should be the world's policemen, that we should be the empire. So let's take a quick break here. Uh, we're going to be right back while CNN is taking a break. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Your liver can be full of fatty deposits, built up toxins, and even dangerous objects known as liver stones. We worked with the top developers in the field of detox to take tried and true herbs and other compounds known to safely cleanse the liver and fuse it with the latest research and technological development on concentrating these ingredients to give you the maximum effect. Liver Shield is the only liver support product on the market that uses a patented Spigerex blend of powerful organic herbs that support detoxification. And when you visit InfoWarsLife.com, See the instructional video on how to do a six-day liver detox. This isn't a game, and let me tell you, the results are dramatic. Liver Shield is totally organic and made of the safest high-quality herbs. But that said, you need to consult your physician before you do the full detox. Liver Shield can also be used daily by itself for overall upkeep of the liver. Secure your Liver Shield today exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com for the lowest price available. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably notice I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're going to crash and going to feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 
and it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true neutral